This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Uh-oh, here's another problem that the chip shortage is causing. Brand loyalty is going out of the window. In the U.S., it fell to a six-year low, according to IHS Market. That's because inventory is so tight, people who used to swear by a brand are now taking whatever car they can get because car dealers don't have what they want. The overall brand loyalty rate of 51% is down from 54% last year and the lowest it's been since August of 2015. Toyota stopped using its e-pallet autonomous vehicles at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo because one of them hit one of the Paralympic athletes. The vehicle was operating in the Olympic Village when it struck a visually impaired athlete, but it was going less than two kilometers an hour or just over one mile an hour. But it wasn't the AV's fault. A human driver on board took control to make a turn, and that's when it struck the athlete who was injured. Toyota CEO Akio Toyota apologized for the accident and said the company is cooperating with authorities in their investigation. There's been another Tesla autopilot accident Over the weekend in Florida, a Tesla allegedly operating on autopilot hit a parked police car with its emergency flashers on after the officer stopped to assist a broken down vehicle. It happened at five in the morning on an interstate near Orlando. Luckily, there were only minor injuries. Earlier this month, NHTSA opened an investigation into the autopilot system over a number of similar crashes. VinFast, is the Vietnamese startup that plans to grow rapidly, but it could be running into growing pains. It already announced it will sell two electric cars in the U.S. market starting next March, and then will begin sales in Europe. One of those EVs, a crossover called the VF E35, features a 300 kilowatt motor, which is over 400 horsepower. It will have a 106 kilowatt hour battery pack that will deliver 400 kilometers of range which is nearly 250 miles. To us, that doesn't seem like much range for such a large battery pack, but let us know what you think. And now comes word that VinFast is closing down its operations in Australia after 12 months of operating there. The company is reportedly cutting back on its engineering staff and outsourcing much of its engineering work going forward. We want to thank Autoline viewer Warwick Dundas in Australia for bringing this story to our attention. The age of silicones began at Fokker more than 70 years ago. Whether you're looking for thermal management of battery systems or the protection of electronics, let your innovations be powered by Fokker silicones. Visit us at Fokker.com. E-mobility powered by Fokker silicones. Mobility is becoming electric connected and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. Volkswagen is expanding its EV lineup in China. It already offers the ID4 and ID6, and in October it will start selling the ID3 as well. The EV will also be built in the country alongside those other two models. So far, sales of VW's ID vehicles in China have been fairly underwhelming, with 5,800 reaching customer hands in July. That is more than three times what it sold in May, and it expects to sell anywhere from 80 to 100,000 ID vehicles by the end of the year. But it does say that's subject to the supply of semiconductor chips. As you may have noticed, VW's rollout of ID vehicles in China is different from its other two biggest regions for sales, the U.S. and Europe. There, the ID3 was launched first, followed by the ID4, and neither has seen the ID6 yet. Speaking of the VW group in China, Porsche is going to open a new R&D center in the country next year. China has been Porsche's biggest sales market for the last six years running, so it makes sense to put more focus on the region. But that's not the only market in the area it's expanding in. Porsche will also set up a small-scale production site in Malaysia. It's not making vehicles from scratch, 
but it will be responsible for final assembly of specific models, which will only be sold in Malaysia. Production starts next year. The Volkswagen Golf is usually the best-selling car in Europe, but in July it was dethroned by an unlikely competitor. The Dacia Sundera was number one last month with more than 20,000 units sold. It's the first time the model has topped the sales charts since its introduction in 2008. Like the Hongguang Mini EV, price plays a factor. The Sondero sells for under 9,000 euro. For those of you who don't know, Dacia is a Romanian brand that's part of the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance. Ford is expanding its range of camper vans in Europe. The new Transit Custom Nugget Active and Trail models are meant for customers that want their camper to stand out a little bit more. The Active has a bit more of a sporty appearance with black cladding around the bottom of the van and exclusive 17-inch wheels. But it also features a side awning and full kitchen area on the inside with wood flooring. The trail is supposed to look more off-road ready by stealing the look of the Raptor's grill and adding even more black cladding. The interior of the trail comes with swiveling front seats, a rear bench seat, and a dining table. Both models are available in standard and long wheelbase versions, and orders from the dealer will open before the end of the year. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. Modern cars are a marvel of engineering and technology. They offer impressive levels of quality, efficiency, and safety. But man, are they getting complicated as we found out while test driving the new Mercedes S-Class, specifically the S580 4Matic. The car is impeccably turned out. The craftsmanship and materials are amongst the best you can find. Its 4-liter V8 with nearly 500 horsepower and over 500 pound-feet of torque moves this massive sedan with amazing ease. The air suspension is a marvel that provides a supple ride for cruising comfort, yet instantly stiffens if you want to hustle it through a sharp corner or sweeping curve. The cabin is plush, whisper quiet, and roomy. Driving this car makes you feel like you've arrived. But before you can enjoy any of that, you better take a couple of days to study the owner's manual. For reasons we never understood, a curious message would pop up on the instrument cluster every time we started driving. Here's what it said. Change the steering wheel slash seat position until six dots are visible on the upper edge of the screen. What the heck is that supposed to mean? It took a while to figure out how to get rid of that message, which involved pushing one of the many buttons on the steering wheel. But it popped back up every time we got in the car. On another occasion, we must have accidentally brushed some other button because the radio display disappeared and was replaced by the image of a computer keyboard. The only way we figured out how to get rid of that was to turn the engine off and then back on again. Another annoying design detail is that the four ventilation vents on the top of the instrument panel are reflected in the windshield in many driving conditions. It's surprising to see that in a flagship car that costs $143,000 because there's design software that can catch that in simulation. Here's our bottom line. The S-Class is a marvel of engineering but it's a complicated car that can confuse and distract drivers until they can figure out what all those buttons mean and learn how to navigate all the different menus. Nissan did a terrific job of redesigning the Frontier pickup truck, and we're gonna take a deep dive into how they developed it on Autoline After Hours this Thursday. Milena Vasco is a senior manager at Nissan's US Tech Center where the vehicle was developed. 
If you've got questions about the frontier you'd like us to ask Milena, tweet it to us or drop an email to viewermail at autoline.tv. Then join John and Gary on Thursday for some of the best insights into what's going on in the automotive industry. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. Vocker, creating tomorrow's solutions. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.